Good morning, Burton Church. How are we doing this morning? We doing okay? All right, all right. Well, first I just want to give honor to our gracious God who is our Father, who is compassionate and loving towards us. And I also want to honor our Savior Jesus Christ, our, ben, our sin-bearing Savior. And I want to acknowledge the Holy Spirit who comforts us and guides us in every area of our lives. I'm so thankful for the Holy Spirit's work in my life, and I'm thankful for all that he's doing. I also want to take this time to just honor and acknowledge your pastor, even in his absence, as uh, Mr. Frank was saying, that your pastor was a part of my ordination process, and it was a pleasure to meet him, and it was just very encouraging on that day to be with him. And I do want to take some time to say, Mr. Frank, thank you so much. Um, thank you for your, for your part of my ordination process, but thank you for taking the time to give me a call uh, to, to be a part of this pulpit supply. I really want you to know I appreciate that. And I, and I have a chance to meet a few people who are here, and I just want to say thank you for your smiling, kind faces. The hospitality here has been great. Thank you, Mike, for working the sound system. Um, again, I just want to say thank you. And I know that there's people who said, you know what, Jason, this is Michigan, and that snow was nasty last night, and there was a whole lot of snow this morning. So I totally understand that. We want you to be safe, and uh, thank you for taking time to join us during this moment, okay? Um, I also want to acknowledge my pastor, Pastor Wine, and our people at Second Missionary Baptist, and those who may be watching us online. Join me in a word of prayer. God, our gracious Father, we thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you've done, and we thank you for this new day. Lord, we acknowledge your holiness, and I acknowledge my sin. Father, my prayer is that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in your sight. I pray, Lord, that this message will edify your people, and you will be glorified. Have your way in this time. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I want to thank uh, Mr. Frank for reading our scripture for today. And I want to start off by just saying that there is a song in the 1970s. They had this phrase that was very popular. You may have remembered it. It starts off, it says, I beg your pardon. I never promised you a rose garden. Sounds familiar? <laughs> As I start and think about that song, it brings me to the point of realization that you know what, in life we have adversities, we have trials, and we have hardships. And even when we take our faith in Jesus Christ and make a decision to follow him, Jesus does not promise us an easy life. In fact, Jesus never promised us that life will be a rose garden. But yet, we can rely on the promises of Jesus, what he did promise us. He promised us that, he promised us that life won't be easy, but we can have life more abundantly. Jesus promises us that he will be with us in our times of trouble. I want to ask you to think about these words of a classic Christian book called The Cost of Discipleship. Diedrich Bonhoeffer wrote these words about the cross. The cross is laid on every Christian. First Christ, suffering which every man must experience is the call to the abandonment, to the attachment of this world. It is that dying of the old man which results from the encounter with Christ. As we embark upon discipleship, we surrender ourselves to Christ in union with his death. We give our lives to death. Thus it begins. The cross is not a terrible end to an otherwise good-fearing and happy life, but it meets us at the beginning of our communion with Christ. When Christ calls a man, he bids him to come and die. The cross meets us at the beginning of our communion with Christ, 
And my question for you this morning, for those who are watching, after your years of faith, I'm assuming that some of you have already put your faith in Christ, but there may be some who have not put your faith in Christ. But are you simply still carrying your cross? Some of us can remember what it was first like when we gave our life to Jesus. There was an overwhelming joy. There was a fire. There was a passion. There was a desire to learn more about God and his word. And we want to tell the whole world about what Jesus has done for us. And yet, as we walk with Jesus, our walk with Jesus can be challenged through adversity. We can find ourselves experiencing pain that, we, that leads us to deep prayer and calling out to Jesus for his peace that he promises. Because while we live this world, we experience hardships and we experience things that we just don't understand. And yet for those who put their faith in Christ, we know that Jesus Christ can anchor us in those moments of life. The vicissitudes of life continue to put our world and our nation in times of trial, confusion, and pain. And in fact, even in our own personal lives, we experience hardships and heartaches that oftentimes we might not have enough strength or courage to share even with our brothers and sisters in Christ. We take those pains to Jesus in prayer. And I'll be honest, for me, um, I found great comfort in the serenity prayer, particularly during this time. For those who may have never heard of the serenity prayer, allow me to read it to you. It says, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Courage to change the things I can and wisdom to know the difference. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as a pathway to peace. Taking, as Jesus did, this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it. Trusting that you will make all things right if I surrender to your will so that I may be reasonably happy in this life and supremely happy with you in the next. There are seasons in our lives, again, where life is not easy, and yet we're called to keep the faith, we're called to endure, and we're called to pick up our cross. And here is another piece of that. You and I are not perfect but yet we are in progress. And even though we're in progress, and even in our imperfections, God in his great love continues to flow to us every morning. God in his great compassion continues to wake us up each morning and allow us to have a brand new start. And that is what we can have strength and joy in, is that God is faithful in his love, even when we may not be faithful even when we have hardships and don't always do the best, God's love for us is still there. You say, Jason, how do we know this? Well, Romans tells us simply that God demonstrated his love to us, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Can I encourage you today, if you're watching, God's love is bigger than your sin. God's compassion for you is bigger than any mistake you may make. And yet, God continuously puts breath in your body. He has numbered your days because he wants each day of your life for you to be in right relationship with him. And this morning, as we read and think about the text that was read, of Jesus calling disciples unto him, calling us to what can be seen and what is a challenging walk, to pick up our cross, give up our way, and follow him.
And that's not a one-time thing. That is an everyday, as Paul would say, I die daily experience, but it's a daily choice for believers. And this morning, I want to ask you, how is your soul as you continue to pick up your cross? How is your heart as you continue to experience hardship and the grace that abounds in God? You know, it's okay not to be okay. It's okay to recognize that, you know what, there, there may be some things in my life that's really hurting. We have a Savior who's close to the brokenhearted. And we have a Savior who calls us to come to him. So this morning, I want to lay at your heart this idea, but really this call, is that faith in Jesus Christ, faith in Jesus Christ will give us the strength to deal with the challenges of life. Why? Because Jesus paid it all for us on the cross. He paid the price for your sin, and his life is an example of what it means to endure and be obedient even to the end. And Christ desires that we have a deep relationship, fellowship, and experience the forgiveness of sin. That's why he died, and that's why he paid it all. So our, our text was read from the Gospel of Mark, just real quickly for those. I, I think you all may know, but Mark was written around 50 A.D., and it's believed that John, John Mark wrote the Gospel based upon the preachings of Peter. And some of you may know Peter was one of Jesus' main disciples, but Peter was just like us. Peter was a real human. Uh, if you can recall, Peter would cuss you out. Peter cut somebody's ear off. And Peter even denied Jesus Christ. And Peter also displayed great faith. Peter also walked on water. And Peter also preached a sermon that saved close to 3,000 souls in the book of Acts. I don't know about you, but I'm so glad that we have a God that doesn't throw us away when we make mistakes. I'm so glad that we have a God that even though I'm imperfect, even though you and I can be imperfect, God still has a purpose and plan for our life. And God still uses us past the moments of pain that we experience. So if you're sitting or listening to me today and you're feeling pain, God is not done with your life. I love it how Paul says, God who began the good work in you will complete it until the day of completion. Some of you may say, Jason, you don't know my story. You don't know what I go through. You don't know what I'm living in my house. But can I tell you that I don't know, but God knows you. God knows the days of your life. He knows the hairs on your head and he knows his intention for you. And because he knows you, he has not forgotten you because he loves you. And what God is calling us to do is to continue to draw to him, even in our imperfection, even in our time of challenge. So can you imagine uh, Jesus Christ calling, calling people to come, take up their cross and follow him? Jesus is still calling us today. He's calling us to take up his cross. So real quickly, what does that mean for us today? Point number one, when it says, if you want to be my follower, you must give up your way and take up your cross and follow me. Let's go with the first one. What does it mean to give up your way? It means that you give up your own means and submit to the leadership of Jesus Christ in every area of your life. It means that God's word becomes the final practice the final authority in your life and your practice. If I could say it another way, it is when you deny yourself and allow God to be first in preeminence in your decision making. 
The challenge, my brothers and sisters, is that this is easier said than done. And even as we live life, it doesn't get easier. But God's grace and his presence gives us strength to make it sweeter and better. You know, when I talk about this not being easy, uh, giving up our way and putting Christ first, sometimes, and I don't know about some of you, but it can be reflected in how we choose to give and handle our finances. If someone was to look at our finances, would they say, hey, this person is obviously putting God and his work first? Sometimes, right? And others like, yeah. But what about your relationships with the people in your household or the people you work with? If they were to look at you and say how you talk with them, how and are you being forgiven with them? Are you being compassionate with them as God has been compassionate with you? Can they say that this person is putting God first? Now, I'll be the first one to tell you, it's not always that way with me. <laughs> I don't know if he gets better when he gets older, but it wasn't always that way with me. And then another place, when we think about our bodies, when we think about what we eat, are we allowing Christ to be first in those choices and those decisions? Here is the problem, here's the challenge. We prefer our comforts, and we like what we like. And yet God is bigger. God has a greater intention for us. And there's things that we just don't understand. And yet God may continue to tell us to give up our way and follow his path. And that requires trust. That requires faith. And that requires giving up our own way. Another issue is that in our own life, at best, we are still short-sighted. We are limited by what our culture tells us and comparing to an awesome, powerful, eternal God who knows the end from the beginning, we just don't have all the answers. And honestly, in the Christian walk, you're not supposed to have all the answers. What we're supposed to have is faith in God and his word. We're supposed to have trust that if God said that he will carry you through, he will do it. We're supposed to have trust that even though this thing is painful, this thing in my body is painful, this problem in my life is challenging, I still will choose to trust God because I believe he has a better end for me. And even if it's not better, I believe that he will make everything right for me because I don't always know the best way. So my first point, as Christ calls us to take up our cross, we have the challenge of taking up our cross because we want it our own way. Allow me to move to my second point. What does it mean to take up your cross? It means to be willing to be identified with Christ and his church. It means that we're willing to even experience suffering, hardship, because we are the body of Christ. And it also means that we're willing to identify that we are sinners and we cannot save ourselves. It means that we're willing to put a public faith and make it real public for everybody that I am with Jesus and I believe that Jesus is the son of God. I have put my faith, I have put my stake, I have put my hope in what Jesus has said and revealed through the word of God. Allow me to make this illustration. Um, during the time of election seasons, right? We all have a civil, civic duty to engage in voting, right? And, and we're called to vote our consciousness. And one of the things of communication that different campaigns have are these slogans. And slogans are designed to be effective and clear way to communicate a message and also bring people together. 
one of the phrases that, that, that stood out in the year 20, 2016 that had a clear and effective way to connect with the candidate, one of the phrases was simply a three-word phrase. And the phrase was simply, I'm with her. Now, regardless of if you were with her or not, or if that was your choice, even when I said it, it connected. <laughs> you knew exactly who that person was. And that was the point of that messaging. That was the point of that phrasing. And that was a really good marketing thing. I want to challenge believers that it should be clear that if people connect our name, they should know who we are with. Picking up our cross means that if people were to ask you, who do you believe in? Who are you with? You would simply say, I'm with him. I'm with Jesus. I'm with his church. And I stand on the word of God. There are so many choices in life, but the biggest choice is what will we believe and how will we live that out? Again, taking up your cross means being willing to be identified with Christ and his church. And there's some challenge with that, is that we live in a world that's hostile to believers. We live in a world that we have an enemy and we have our own desires and we have different challenges. And yet again, Christ continues to call us to pick up our cross and follow him. And if I can give you any encouragement with that, is that even in your suffering, Christ has a way to carry you and connect with you, even in your suffering. Allow me to, to share this. When I got this call to uh, be a part of the pool pit supply, it was a day that I was experiencing a very challenging day. Have you ever had one of those days that you said, you know, I don't know what's going on, but if God, what, what is going on? And it seemed like the people and the things that you know and love have now kind of went differently. And I'm saying, Lord, I'm trying to follow you. I am doing my best here. And I'm just, just really struggling, flabbergasted, just, just a mess. And honestly, just really hurt, right? So when I went back and I got this email that said, hey, pulpit supply, it gave me so much hope. It affirmed to me, I'm like, wow, okay, Lord, I don't know, I had a rough meeting but after this meeting, you're giving me hope that I have a better future, that you still have things for me, that just because I experienced this tough moment, life isn't over. So when I got that email, I was so encouraged. And one of the things that I really wanted to do, and I apologize for not being here last week, is that I really wanted to find a way that you would feel the same encouragement that I felt on that day. And I don't know if I'm doing that, but I just want you to know that God loves you and he knows where you are. And, I'm, and God uses us as the body of Christ to encourage each other. So I want to encourage you that your smiles, your words, and your prayers are not naught. As you pray for your children and your grandchildren, God hears them and God is moving. And as you serve God with your life, with your words of encouragement, it really blesses people. So I just want to say again, thank you for this opportunity. And it is my hope that even though we have the call to pick up our cross, even though we have challenges in our life, God will shepherd you through every day of your life. God will complete the good work that he started in your heart. And even when you have to give up your own way, God's way is better, and he has a better end for you. Now, I have one more point, but I'm trying to make sure I just stay with this. But really, I just want to make sure I'm speaking from my heart. So we talked about giving up your own way. 
We talked about taking up your cross, which it means to be identified with Christ. And let's get to this last point. The last point here, as we read in the gospel, what does it mean to follow me? Following Jesus is not a one-time decision. Following Jesus is a moment-by-moment surrender. And yes, we don't do it perfectly, but we're called to do it consistently. And even when we blow it, and even when it feels like this might not be working, God never gives up on us. God never gives up on us or his plan for our lives. That's a part of following Jesus because Jesus wants to take us to a place that even as this world and as our last days here, that he will take us to a place that he's promised for us, for those who put their faith in him. You know, I want to share this before I begin to close. The Bible says the end of a thing is better than the beginning. Some of us have had a great start in our faith. Some of us may have had a great life. And now we find ourselves looking at the days and looking at the time. And it's easy to feel like when tragedy, when hardship rocks us, what is left? What can I do now? I want to remind you that each day is a new beginning and a new opportunity. And as long as you have life and breath in your body, God has a great ending for you. God has a great work for you. God has a great calling for you. But in order for us to engage and accept that calling, we have to give up our way, be willing to be identified with Jesus, and take up our cross. God will keep you and he will carry you each day of your life. And God has a great promise for you. So church this morning, I've shared with you a smaller version of what this text means to me about taking up your cross. Recognizing that in life we will have challenges, but we have a conquering savior. Recognizing that in life we will suffer, but we have a suffering savior who will give us strength and support in our time of need. Can I also tell you, that even when it looks like it's over, it's not really over until God says it's over. God has the ability to turn things around because God has a different view and he has a different plan for your life. And he has a way of walking with you. Christ is calling. Today I want to encourage you. Heed the call of Christ. Follow Jesus afresh and allow God to walk with you through each day of your life. Thank you for your time. May God bless you.